Hi, my name is Ashley. Welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to show you how I create these unique stained glass earrings. So, let's get started. Now, start off with a piece of stained glass. I use a permanent marker to trace out my design. Using a glass cutting oil is recommended when cutting your glass before scoring. I love using this glass cutting machine to help cut straight lines and exact measurements. After scoring your line, you run your running pliers to break the glass. You do this by lining the line on your running pliers directly over the line that you just scored into the glass. In my first stained glass jewelry tutorial, I shared how to use this machine. I also have a video on how to cut glass freehanded, and I will link both of these videos along with items used in this project in the description box below. If you would like to help this channel, you can purchase your items through the links below. When cutting glass or using your grinder, always make sure to use caution and wear your safety glasses. I had the honor of using Inland Grinder. You simply add water to the fill line, add water coolant if wanted, wear your safety glasses, make sure the glass stays wet with a sponge, and always use caution. Using a glass grinder machine makes the glass smooth and safe to wear. Also, grinding the glass helps the foil tape have better placement on the edges of the glass. Wearing my safety glasses, I simply bring the piece of glass up to the wet diamond bit and glide the glass back and forth and around the edges to get a smooth result on all sides of the glass. I follow the permanent marker line to guide where to grind. After a while, I have to retrace the area since some of the permanent marker wiped off in the grinding process. When I come up to the top of the heart, I use the smaller diamond bit on top. When doing so, I make sure to bring the wet sponge up to the area and make sure the glass stays wet while grinding the glass to the correct shape. I then clean the glass with a glass cleaner. This step helps the foil stick to the glass edges more effectively. I used 3M 3 inch black copper foil for this project. This tool comes in handy in regards to burnishing the foil onto your glass. I highly recommend it. I line up the glass on the foil where I can see that it's even on both sides of the glass. While placing the foil on the glass, I like to go ahead and apply pressure to help start the burnishing process. I roll both sides of the foil down together at the same time by using this burnishing tool. I then fold in the corners inward and burnish, burnish, burnish. I also use my fingernails to get into the textured glass indentions to make sure the foil sticks well to all areas even the uneven textured areas. I continue to burnish and fill the smoothness with my fingers until it feels smooth to the touch. Burnishing is very important for stained glass and stained glass jewelry. I do this burnishing process to each piece of glass. It is important to remind you, if you're planning on making jewelry this way, you must use a lead-free soldering wire since the items used will be worn close to the skin for long periods of time. 
Now, we made it to the soldering section of this video. If you are curious about the tools or supplies used, don't forget there's a list of items used in the description box below. Each piece of glass should be individually wrapped with copper foil and burnished. I ensure the jump ring is made with the right metal before doing this step. After choosing which stud I want to use, I then use my third hand tool to get the placement just right for the desired design. Make sure the split of the jump ring is pointing towards the foil. This secures the ring from opening while wearing the jewelry. With my hot soldering iron, I begin with adding some tip tinner to it. The tip tinner helps save the soldering iron's tip, and it also helps with your iron if it doesn't want to grab a hold of the soldering wire. I use the glass flux lid for my flux dispenser. I place the flux on the area where the two pieces meet, the joint area. Next, I grab some lead-free soldering wire with my soldering iron, just a small amount like a pea size. I then place the small amount of solder and place it at the joint area. I then turn the glass over and I repeat the process. I then flux the copper foil again. I personally enjoy using a wet sponge for cleaning my soldering tip. I repeat the soldering process by using very little solder and short quick strokes. This is a good example of the soldering wire not attaching to the soldering tip. The tip tinner helps with this issue. I do final touch-ups with very quick strokes of the iron. The next part of the design is adding a dangle. I use very similar steps that I used when I attached the stud in the beginning of the video. The only difference is that I decided to add a small chain for extra dangle. When using patina, you should never re-dip any material into the liquid because it will contaminate the bottle. So I use a fresh Q-tip side each dip. It is recommended to clean the glass two times with glass cleaner and then once with alcohol after using patina. Finalizing the stained glass jewelry with finishing compound is recommended. This project was really fun and relaxing. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making these earrings. I also hope I inspire you to do some crafts of your own. 
please subscribe to my channel for more craft adventures. Thanks for watching and stay blissful.